I'm Pete Zielinski with Additive Manufacturing Media. We're doing a video series to show the role of software in realizing the promise of additive manufacturing. I'm with Gene Granada of CG Tech. CG Tech makes simulation software to verify processes digitally, additive processes, machining processes, and processes that combine both. So Gene, a recent advance is the ability to simulate additive machines from Thermwood. Uh, so this is an Indiana company that makes very large additive machines. Um, uh, they might be used to build very large tools, for example, like tooling used in the composites industry. Um, I, correct me if I'm wrong, I think this might be the biggest 3D printer CG Tech has simulated, and it might be the first polymer additive machine that you've simulated. Am I right about either or both, both of those? Uh, you're right on the large part, Pete. Uh, these machines can be quite large. Uh, the first one we ran into was 10 by 20 feet uh, for a bed size. They uh, also have one we built that's twice the length of that, so a 10 by 40 foot machine, so very large part capability um, and a lot of material getting put down these, by these machines, and they move very quickly, too. All right, so, so simulating a polymer build process is something you've had some experience with, but to, to hear your answer there, one at this scale is something new for you. So did the size of this build present particular challenges in developing the simulation? The parts of that size demand a lot of computer resources. Um, users need control over the tolerances for simulation. So one of the challenges for us was to get our Vericut software to consider uh, that information and make sure that you have enough computer resources to do the job properly. Um, so, okay, so if you don't mind, let's go into the software now. Um, and maybe let's talk through an instance where, where simulation is valuable. So this is the 10 by 20 bed machine, uh, building a part that's approximately 10 feet by 10 feet and about six feet tall. Uh, what I'm showing on the screen is what we hope to build. That's the actual finished part. Um, I've started uh, the simulation a little bit where we can talk about what Vericut's doing. For those that know Vericut, what it's doing is it's reading the NC code file and uh, processing that on the digital twin of the machine so you can see exactly what's going on. And the code tells everything. There's special codes on this machine, Pete, that do unique things. Uh, this particular code, for example, moves the machine differently uh, in a non-interpolated rapid mode. If you don't use that code or a different code, it might move linearly. And these are the kinds of things that, that our users want to be able to see in the simulation so that it really mimics what happens uh, on the machine. So every code is important. Every code needs to get picked up and processed so that when you run the simulation, you're just literally looking for what's happening. And it looks something like this. So we're just running a little bit, and uh, I set Vericut to stop when it detected a problem. So as it's reading this file and running the print side of the machine, it stopped right in this local area here. And I don't know if you can see this, but it's given me a message that says, this material uh, has exceeded the maximum material overhang. Now this is a unique process problem on, on the LSAM machine and big area machines doing uh, the carbon fiber printing that we're doing here. Uh, what happens is, is there has to be something underneath it. So let's get the machine out of the way here and just look at what's going on with the part build. And we'll take a look at what's happening in that area. So we've come around the corner here and we started to build something. But if you look at this area, there's literally nothing supporting that material. And that's why Vericut tossed the error. Now this is interesting because in a CAM programming world, you're allowed to do this uh, in many cases. You, you, it's no problem filling the part in that area. Uh, Vericut is going to show you what the NC program tries to do, and you can see it's just trying to do a bridge across nowhere, and therefore we're getting these errors here. So that type of a process error is going to plague you on the machine and cause you wasted time, uh, wasted material, and if this were farther along in the build process, it could take you hours to find problems like this, and it takes you minutes in simulation. Give me a sense uh, for, an, for a problem like that. How would that have crept into the build? What might have happened there that would have, would have made that possible to happen? 
Well, there's a couple of things that, that could happen. Uh, the cam systems uh, that accompany the machines many times or they're the cam system of choice by the user, they simply allow you to build something like this. Their job is to essentially put additive material where you tell it to. This is the finished build. Um, it was about 400,000 lines of code. On the real machine, this would take in excess of six hours to build this part. And you could imagine if that floating bridge I had was somewhere further along in the build in this place, uh, that could happen by somebody editing the program or scrambling operation sequences or that. And all of a sudden, you know, you, you've got to fail on the machine that you're not very proud of and it's expensive. Thank you, Gene. For more on large format polymer 3D printing and more on simulation, see the links in the description below. For much more on additive manufacturing technology, the way that it's changing production, the way that it's changing industry, visit our website, additivemanufacturing.media.